The Republicans have no shame whatsoever, okay? Their moral compass is broken. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to The Billionaire's Mindset. I'm your host, Harry Billion. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel, pressing that like button, and making sure to comment and share with your friends if you found value in this content. With all that being said, it's go time. We all know that Trump chose his running mate, J.D. Vance. You've seen multiple interviews already because that's what they're going with. They sit down with the press and they give interviews. And Kamala and her running mate, they don't give interview. They're going with that for now. But there is one thing that I want to talk about in this video, which I found pretty puzzling. Because it's the utter lack of shame or I guess they either don't remember or they just don't care. And that thing is the fact that everything that they're levying against Kamala and her running mate, they are worse acts. I, I don't even know what, how to term it, to tell you the truth. Recently, J.D. Vin sat down with Dana Bash on the CNN network. He gave an interview. I found the interview to be quite telling. It's just some things that I learned out of the interview that I found to be puzzling. The conclusion that I came out with, it's like either they know exactly what they're doing and they don't care about how we think about what they're doing, or they just think that we don't know. So let's play the clip and let's find out why these guys' moral compass is so off. And I know that we cannot be this dumb. Like, they, do they really think we're this dumb? No way, right? Let's go ahead and play the clip and you tell me. Uh, something that Governor Walls has called you and Donald Trump, and that is weird. Sure. And it is taken off. The New York Times reports that when Donald Trump was asked about it, he said, not me, they're talking about JD. Well, certainly they've levied that charge against me more than anybody else, but I think that it drives home how they're trying to distract from their own policy failures. I mean, look, this is fundamentally schoolyard bully stuff. They can accuse me of whatever they want to accuse me of. So I think that what it is, is two people, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz, who aren't comfortable in their own skin because they aren't comfortable with their policy positions for the American people. And so they're name calling instead of actually telling the American people how they're going to make their lives better. I think that's weird, Dana, but look, they can call me whatever they want to. For him to say those words, for him to utter those words, it's like you're tone deaf to your own campaign and what the top of your ticket is saying. Like, Trump is saying the most vile things, bro. <laughs> Name calling? I don't have words for it. Donald Trump calls people names constantly, constantly. I don't even have to play you the clips from calling women fat, stupid, ignorant, incompetent. All of those things he's constantly saying, either J.D. Vince does not know that or he's willfully being ignorant to that, doesn't care and think we're stupid enough to believe what he's saying and just go with it. There's more. You have been on the campaign trail questioning Tim Walz's military record. You say it was shameful that Governor Walz retired from the military before his unit deployed to Iraq. I want to read you something that Joe Eustis, who is a veteran, he served sure. with Governor Walz, said. He said that's a lie. He said he was a good, as good a soldier as you'll find. I'm not trying to defend him. I hope people don't think that. What I'm trying to do is defend someone who served his country. I'm not voting for him. I'll campaign against him but I don't think it's fair to characterize his service the way they have. Governor Walz served 24 years. Sure. He even stayed after he could have retired because uh, of 9-11, more than the country asked of him. Do you honor his service? Well, of course, Dana, I honor his service. And I've never criticized what Tim Waltz did when he was in the military. I criticized his retirement decision. And most importantly, Dana, I, I criticized his lying about his own record, okay? This is a guy who was captured on video saying, I carried a gun in war. He never went to war. This is a guy who's been captured on video. As other people say, he's an Afghanistan veteran. He's a veteran of a war, nodding along in agreement instead of saying, no, 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 I did serve my country and I did it honorably, but I never went to a war zone. I'm not criticizing Tim Waltz's service. I'm criticizing the fact that he lied about his service for political gain, Dana. Now, I served in the United States Marine Corps, and you know this. And look, there are a lot of things that I'm proud about. I've never lied about what I did or overstated it because it would be beneficial to me in an election. I think that's what Tim Waltz did. That's what I was criticizing. And yes, I do think it's scandalous behavior. This is amazing. Like... Look at his hands and look how proud he's sitting saying this stuff. It's amazing how he's able to say this stuff. 
like convincingly, like he's so proud that he got something on on Tim Walls, and he's calling out Tim Walls about his service. He's not worried about his service. It's the the fact that he lied about his service going into a war zone, which he didn't. The Harris campaign has already come out to say that that was misspeaking. But the fact that J.D. Vance is saying so emphatically and so confidently that he abhors somebody lying for political gain, it's bothersome to anybody out there. You should be bothered that this guy is actually like with a straight face. And my Liberian folks that are out there would say, ah, the piggy guy dry fizzle. Ah, oh my, I can't believe the man got dry fist. That means that this guy is really sitting up here with a straight face. And he's saying that he doesn't like people that lie for a political gain. That's like one of those things that make you go, huh? No way. So they must think that we got to be the dumbest people. Like the people that they're trying to appease to win their votes. You have got to be the dumbest people on the face of the earth to sit here and actually think that this guy is being genuine. There's no way this guy is being genuine saying, hold up, wait a minute. We don't like liars who lie for a political gain. This guy. Nothing he can remember about his own behavior that suggests that what he's saying would not hold water or would not pass the smell test because people should have either forgotten already what he'd done, his sin. And what we know about the Bible saying, hey, before you point out the speck in somebody else's eye, make sure to take the plank out of your own eye. This guy has no credibility, zero credibility when it comes to saying somebody's lying for a political gain. Let me jot your memory real quick. J.D. Vance, author of Hillbilly Elegy. He came from nothing. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. You said idiot if you vote. Voted for him. I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter. Might be America's Hitler. An idiot and a moral disaster. You gotta respect the American people enough to just level with them. JD is kissing my ass. He wants my support. So From the party with no platform. I'm a never Trump guy. He's the best president of my lifetime. What are we doing? What are we talking about? I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him, terrible candidate. You're an idiot if you voted for him. This is the same guy that now we fast forward to where when Donald Trump now chooses him to be the vice president to run with him on the ticket, he accepts it and says, okay, I will run with you. And now he is saying that Trump is the best president of his lifetime. The same guy that said these words. This is the guy that's now telling Tim Walsh or trying to convince us that lying is bad. It's bad to lie to the American people. Let's level with the American people and tell them the truth. Oh, am, hey, guys, am I missing something here? I'm not missing anything, right? I'm just saying, like, we got to know better. Some way, somehow, we have to know better, right? Because if he persuaded you with the CNN interview and the line where he says, I wasn't talking about his service. I was just trying to make a point about the fact that he lied about his service. And I don't like people that lie about something to get something. I'm not criticizing Tim Waltz's service. I'm criticizing the fact that he lied about his service for political gain, Dana. Maybe it's me. Maybe because I come from a small town in West Africa. You're telling me that I should trust you, that your moral compass is intact because you don't like people that lie for political gain. And you went on television, you're caught on camera telling us that you don't like Trump, that he's a terrible person, he's a terrible candidate, and that whoever voted for him is an idiot. But now you have changed your mind and now he's the best president in your time. And we're supposed to trust you to make decisions for us. That guy with that morals, we're supposed to trust you to make decisions for us. How? How can we? If you voted for him. I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump supporter. It might be America's Hitler. An idiot. Hey, man, salute to the Midas Touch Network for putting that together. That's just absolutely awesome. I find it to be utterly shameful, the fact that they think that we don't know better. I always wanted to explore the mind of a voter. When they press you on it, you don't come out and be like the rest of us because you're not like us. 
right? You you don't do you don't do this thing where you say, you know what? I said those things and I'm a man and I stand on those things. Unless you don't believe the words that you say that comes out of your mouth and those words can just fall to the ground, then what type of man are you? What can we believe about who you are and what you are telling us in current time? Because what you said before, you don't believe. So what do we believe now? Should I believe the things that you're telling me now? Because you're not standing on the stuff that you said before. That kind of man you can't trust. That kind of person Person you should never trust because you're never going to be able to get the truth out of them. One second they're saying one thing, the next second they're saying another thing. They're taking it all back. I had to call out this hypocrisy because I feel like there's no way that this is reflecting on us. A lot of this stuff really reflects on us. Believe it or not, this stuff reflects on us as the public. We're out here. I'm you and you're me. We're out here. We're not politicians. If you don't like the music industry the way it is, then why is it that they constantly play stuff that is demeaning to women? anti-christ why is the music industry like that is because of the things that you like when they do play the other things just testing out materials you don't respond to it so everything reflects on us who we are if trump wins the election and jd vince becomes your vice president then that means that the messaging the things that he stands for his values and his morals you accept and you say i'm fine with those things you're saying that you're okay with that after they serve another set of time is going to past another set of candidates are going to come on the scene and they're going to try to sell you a message they're going to sound a little similar to jd vince and to trump something is going to happen inside of your brain that's going to say no you're wrong because you're lying to me what is that thing in my brain that turns off for certain people and then turns back on for another person what is that thing that's a reflection on us out here i don't want to believe for one second that god's creations are this gullible this stupid this dumb my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge i don't want to believe for one second that we can see people like this and we give them a pass because we subscribe to a specific political party i don't want to believe it if you're listening to me if you're watching this video and you happen to make it this far and you're one of those people when michelle obama wore the short sleeves and you got outraged and said i can't believe she looks like that and she's the first lady she should be representing the first lady in the country a lot better and not like a whore and you got on that train and y'all made that argument because you remember all of the other first ladies and how they carry themselves and how they uphold the office of the first lady or the presidency how they actually support the president if you were enraged but then your switch flipped when melania trump's wife comes on the scene and naked photos of her leaks in the public and that did not enrage you. You accepted it and say, I'm fine with that. I don't care about that. That's okay for me. If you are one of those people, I submit to you, you have one of these moral switches that turns on and off. Your moral compass turns on and off for who you like. And then if you call yourself a Christian, I also submit to you that you're not a Christian. You are by far, especially if you consider yourself an evangelical Christian, let me let you know and break that ice for you. You're not a Christian. God is going to tell you at the end, depart from me. I never knew you. That's what's going to happen to you. This has nothing to do with being a Republican or a Democrat. Because to you, it might sound like, oh, you're saying that God's not going to like me because I'm not a Democrat. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if your moral switch turns off and it turns on for certain people, then I'm trying to let you know that you're not a Christian. God's morality and what God requires of us, that's not a switch that you can turn on and off. And I wanted to make sure that I'm one of those people that can tell you that respectfully. Vote for whoever you want to vote for. We have to be the standard for morality in this land. There are issues on all sides, issues upon issues, but we have to be the ones to be the standard bearers for the issues that we face in our society. And if people cannot tell who we are because our morals is a switch, we have a moral switch that can be turned on and off, then we're not Christians. Then we're not representing God. We should not be on and off. Because people say that they are evangelical Christians doesn't mean that they are upholding Christian standard. They're not. You can't just say, oh, the Democrats, they love gays and lesbians and God don't like gays and lesbians and then forget about everything else that's going on in your own party. Because if that's the only choice for you, then you're measuring sins. 
And for you, LGBT is the ultimate sin that you are not willing to forgive. They want to provide tampons for these people. They want to do this for the LGBT community and being gay. Oh, there's no way you can be a Democrat if they support gays and lesbians. For you, you're measuring sins. You're not looking at the policies that is going to affect the people. You're just measuring sins and you're applying your morality or your level of who you are in Christ. You're applying that to the measurement that you give the sin. But God measures all sins equally. If you're willing to forgive Donald Trump's sins, but you can't get over the gay and lesbian thing, let me submit to you that God is not pleased with your decision. Simple as that. I'll let you know. Even though I don't subscribe to being a Republican, I like Republican ideas. I lean more Democratic, but I like Republican ideas when they present them and they're actually good ideas. There's no way I can accept kids being taken to drag shows. No way. Never, ever, ever, ever. You're telling me that men in tights and showing their genitals and their stuff hanging out, men dressing like women and gyrating and parading and all that stuff, kissing each other. I'm going to let my child watch all of that. But then on the flip side, if a heterosexual male wanted to take a child to a strip club, you would frown upon that and say that is morally incorrect. We have to decide what we want to do and how we want to play this game. Children, to see all of these sexually explicit things that happen at a strip club but it's okay for us to allow children to see all of these sexually explicit things that are happening with the lgbt community parading in front of kids that's okay because they're gay when heterosexuals are doing it then that's kind of like it's different and we don't want kids to see that i don't know how you can make that argument i have no idea democrats y'all gotta figure that out Look at the Olympics and how it opened up. If that's where you're caught up on the Democrats and you're a Republican, that's that's where it ends for you. Man, you have 10 years of Trump. 10 years of Trump. Kamala Harris ain't black. I mean, calling black women all kinds of vile names. Now the reports are coming out that he's called Kamala Harris the B word. You have 10 years of Trump. So weigh your sins. If you're weighing sins, there's one thing to say he's the best candidate and there's another thing to be doing it because of the weight of the sins that you have applied to what each party is doing. I want you to think about that. That's all I have for this video. Take care and make sure you take care of each other. Harry B, I'm out.